What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the BTR Podcast. Today, we're joined by a very special guest. I don't see at this point a returning guest at many times now. Uh, before uh, I introduce him, let me just give you his credentials. He's the host of the Behind the Play podcast, also the Weekend Ball podcast on the Raptors Republic YouTube channel, beat writer for the Hockey News covering the Ottawa Senators, and now adding the Ottawa PWHL team and some Canada soccer in there as well. We're joined by a good buddy once again, Alex Adams. How's it going, brother? Great. Thanks so much for having me. And uh, I feel, uh, you know, I, I see you guys wearing uh, Canucks gear and I, I, I don't know what a playoff uh, team's like. I've never seen it in my life. So I'm, glad, I'm glad you guys are good over there in, in Vancouver and have a good team, even though you've uh, been losing a bit of late, but a uh, big win on the with last night too. So, but uh, yeah, thanks when you so beat Boston, yeah. when you beat Boston, you kind of have to rep it. <laughs> it everything. Exactly. It's <laughs> in Vancouver. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah so before, 2011 yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah exactly uh before we continue just a heads up to the viewers out there if you guys missed it we actually recorded a podcast with alex back in december talking about his career so if you're interested about more about alex as well you guys could check out we'll link it down below but check us check it out on our youtube channel or audio platforms as well um we'll be talking mainly about the pwhl today uh nhl alex will be trying to educate us and the viewers about this so we'll get right into it uh, Alex, obviously, it's the inaugural season of the PWHL. We're about 13-ish games in. Uh, your overall thoughts on the season so far and how has it been covering a team at the league in general? Yeah, I mean, I think anyone, even the most wildly optimistic people would say that it's been a complete surprise and in a great way just because of how much fanfare, how many people have been tuning in, how many fans have been going to the games. I just, you know, you look at the Battle of Bay Street, which for people that don't know, Toronto and Montreal played that the two PWHL teams played at the Scotiabank or it's no, it's a, uh, yeah, it's Scotiabank. What is it? I forget center in, in arena in, in Toronto arena, yeah. and, uh, and sold out and broke the record for most amount of fans at a professional women's hockey game. And you see it around now they're in the States. There's going to be games in Pittsburgh, Detroit, at, at where the, the, their NHL teams play. Um, for some games for the PWHL. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a game here in Ottawa at the Canadian Tire Centre. Um, there's going to be a game, it looks like, at the Bell Centre. So um, that's because people are loving it. People are showing up here in Ottawa. We've essentially got all sellouts um, at the TD Place here in, in downtown. And the fans are amazing. And it's just great to see because um, women's hockey has been in the depths of, of kind of our consciousness is as sports fans and hockey fans. And, and now to finally have it a, a, on a platform where it can grow is just awesome to see. And um, the players are finally paid what, the, what they deserve. Um, they get good amenities, everything. It's pretty first class. It's very professional just being around at least Ottawa. And I've heard the same around the league. So um, yeah, it, it's awesome to see. And uh, hopefully, you know, it can it can be the start of something that uh, maybe it doesn't rival the NHL, at least in our lifetimes, but where it is something where kids grow up and they don't think about hockey just in terms of the NHL, but they think about it as men's and women's hockey, the PWHL and, and the NHL. And uh, it's just it's just awesome to see. And, and you can see it on the women's faces. They 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 talk and express numerous times about how lucky they are, but also how surprised they are that it's been so successful so far and record crowds everywhere. So, um, and the hockey's awesome. And, and I can tell, you know, watching Ottawa, the team I, I cover, um, I can tell the skill level and everything's going up. I think just because there is a league that, you know, iron sharpens iron. And I feel that's represented in the hockey so far as, as the games continue, you see more skill, more continuity, and just better hockey. And, and that's awesome too. So overall, it's been amazing, a privilege, um, especially as a man in a women's league to, to cover. Um, you know, I, I don't take that lightly. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been awesome. And uh, just hopefully uh, we, we get a team in Vancouver and an expansion in a couple of years or something like that. Yeah. From, from a marketing perspective, I think they've done a great job because like they have, they make it available to everyone, right? Like they have games on YouTube. They're always posting Instagram stuff. So I feel like they've done a great job for that aspect of the game, you know, making it available for everybody. It kind of probably helped a lot, right? Yeah, and, and like even here, it's not just making it available, which I think is awesome that all the games are on YouTube. Every, anyone can watch them if they want to. 
it's obviously on TSN Sports. Then all the games, or at least all the Canadian teams' games. So that's great, right? Like we we think about it. Like they for a lot of them, they've never been on TV. They've never had the platform to be consistently seen, and it makes it easy for fans to connect with them and watch them. And at the same time, you know, here in Ottawa, like tickets aren't one hundred and twenty dollars to to go to a game. They're twenty. 30 40 bucks right they're much more manageable for so many people who obviously in our economy it's not the easiest thing to, to go to games and i think because they're much more affordable it's much more people want to go and i think another thing that i would say is just that you know with hockey when you go to a vancouver canucks game or you go to a senators game here in ottawa most people are men right and and it's probably what 80 90 percent men at these games maybe 75 sometimes but it's predominantly men i'm in ottawa you go to a pwhl ottawa game it's 65 percent women right so it's a demographic that hasn't been really sold to for the game of hockey and finally you know they are being trying to sell to women to go to watch women play and i'm, I'm not saying it should only be women watching these games or going by no means like i cover the the the, the league and the team as a as a man but I think it's just awesome that, you know, a lot of women want to go, right? And, and in the past, it was really mostly a man's game and people, you know, men predominantly want to go. So I think that's been an, another reason to their success is just that they've been tapping into so many girls and, and people that want to watch women play. And, and that's been awesome to see as well. To bounce off the Joven's point here as well, the accessibility, because like, you know, you could have, we're in the social media era. We're in the era where kids are on YouTube all the time. To your point, little girls could be now just checking out uh, PWHL games on YouTube and be like, okay, I want to be the next Brianne Jenner, Mary Philip Poulin, if you're American, um, Hillary Knight or uh, Taylor Heisey, right? So like, I think that that as well is like not just currently, but long term is like the great solution as well. Yeah, for sure. And it, it's funny that you say that because um, I know a lot of the women have said this, that Typically, they play for Canada or before that in the other various leagues. It'd always be girls coming up to them and, and saying, you know, I want to be like you, which is awesome. I'm not taking that away. That's incredible. But what they're getting now is more young boys. Like I was talking to a player in Ottawa, Kristen Della Rovere, and she was saying that a little boy ran up to her and said, are you on the team? And he got really excited. And then when she said she was teammates with Brianne Jenner, she, he, sorry, got super excited like oh my god like how you know her and right and, and for the young generation that are six seven eight nine ten they don't really know anything other than this league now and you know like with us like we never grew up with a women's league so i think it's yeah. going to change how people perceive women's sports and and i think it's also you know you guys love soccer um the the fifa women's world cup was huge last summer record crowds you know um record amount of engagements and views and i think women's sport across the world is is growing at a pretty steep pace even the wnba look at sabrina in nescu shooting off with steph curry right the wnba has been growing as well so um overall i think women's sports is on the rise and i think this league has really tapped into that in terms of um trying to sell to women and also just growing the women's game from a place of maybe in you know uh the the doldrums of of our our sports media landscape to making it very visible very um in front of our faces and you can see that with uh, the engagement and how many people are loving the hockey and loving going to games um okay let's move on to the on ice product a little bit here now uh the rules are slightly different from the nhl they're kind of more on the iihf side of things i believe like with the well, like the wins losses standing wise is a yeah. overtime wins. Hmm. Your overall thoughts? Are you a fan of that? Um, yeah, yeah, love it. I would love the NHL to go to a three two one point system. I think that's more fair, right? Um, you know, if you just win games in shootouts or in overtime, um, that feels more like a toss up, and you get the same amount of points as like for the standings as if you beat a team six two, right? And I don't yeah. think that's really the right way to go about it. I think of like, I think Florida, the Panthers, when they won the president's trophy, they won like, I don't know, maybe like 15 games in overtime. Like they were kind of overtime merchants and yeah. that's how they became a top of the standings. And that's a completely different game. And I love three on three. I'm not saying, but I just don't think that should be 
given the same weight of as a, in terms of a win as a team that wins in regulation. And I think the three, two, one system also makes it easier for teams to come back, right? Like Ottawa right now um, is, is, is last in the standings because uh, every team I cover in terms of hockey uh, does not do very well, but, um, <laughs> but at the same time, if they win two or three regulation wins in a row, they're back in a playoff spot. Right. And if they were playing in the, um, the other type of like the NHL rules where it's just two and one, they'd probably be, it would be much harder for them to come back. So I think it means playoff races can last longer, more excitement and makes you really want to earn that regulation win. Like less people are just trying to kill the last two to five minutes of a tied game in the third period. Right. So I think it's great. And then I don't know if people know, but they have this uh, jailbreak rule. Um, which is awesome. And it's essentially if the a team shorthanded scores, um, the penalty and they're the power play for the other team. And yeah, so yeah. you're doubly rewarded for a shorthanded goal, which I just I've love. been vocal on that too. Like off, like even before we started the podcast, I'm like, if a power play is there, can, okay, well, that could be a little bit excessive. You should continue, but the shorthanded side of things, if you score a shorthanded goal, the team should not be punished <laughs> for uh, yeah. they, they get a power play against them. Right. Yeah. I, I'm with you for that. Uh, any other rules that are slightly different or is that the two main ones? Um, so I, the, the, the two things I would say is like the checking's a bit different. Like they don't allow any open ice hits, but you are allowed to body check, which is a completely, for the most part, new thing to the game of women's hockey. There is physicality, but not pure body checking. So talking to the players, it's the first time they've ever body checked in their lives. And, and there isn't that many crazy hits. I would say watching the league, like dangerous, like, you know, obviously a couple, but less so than I would say the NHL, but um, that's a kind of cool thing. And I think what will be interesting to see is does the NCAA in women's hockey adopt it, but also youth level, right? If it's part of the PWHL, does it trickle down to other, um, to minor hockey leagues and associations? Um, Because for almost all of these women, they've never grown up with body checking. I think they've adapted to it like surprisingly well truthfully but um, I think that's a really interesting uh, little tidbit as to how body checking evolves in the women's game and then the other one is they and this is very small is they don't have the uh, the trapezoid so you're the goalie's allowed to, to play the puck wherever they want but that those are really the the only rules is the point system uh, jailbreak the shorthanded goals and um, body checking is just a bit different but it's it's mostly the same to the NHL other than just you can't just like deck someone in the middle of the ice. Yeah. So uh, one second. Uh, going back to your point of the um, the playoff stand, it's the standings in general. And just to bounce off your point, I just forgot to mention it earlier. It's like not only is longer playoff um, standings, oh, sorry, playoff r- races, but it also puts pressure on like, you know how before you're like, oh, you just need the point, just get it to overtime and you'll, you'll clinch a playoff spot. Now it's like, oh, we need two points or we need to get this three points that way as well right so it's not just the excitement of longer playoff races but like kind of like soccer if it's like a three i know there's no two points there but it's like yeah. okay we need to fight for a draw or we at, at the minimum we need to fight for uh at least to get two points into one right it's like it, to your point that's uh it makes it more fun long term as well yeah no I, I think you hit it on the nail i think it's just it's just a better system i i, I yeah i don't really understand why the, i think the nhl doesn't want to change it because how it would change all the record books, right? Because yeah. teams have, I don't know, 150 points in the standings yeah. compared to what Boston had, which was one, I think 130 something last year, yeah. um, which was the record. So um, it would change that. But honestly, I think it's just a better way to do it. Like I think about my the Sens team that I cover. If there was, if there was three point games, one, they'd be very good. They don't, they haven't won a lot of overtime and shootout games, although they did win one last night. Um, but they would have a much more realistic chance of coming back into the playoffs um, than they do now because of the two point system. They, it's almost impossible that they, they could come back unless they go on a Vancouver Canucks S Keter. So uh, yeah. So I, so overall, I just, I love it. And, and I think as you mentioned, it just makes the games more interesting because of the point system. So looking at standings, Montreal's number one, but are they the best team? Like, is there, do you think like a Minnesota might be better, but like who are second? Yeah, I think, 
Yeah, Montreal has like a great core. Obviously, Poulet is the best player in the world, and Debian might be the best goalie in the world. So when you have those rocks, those foundation um, pieces, maybe like a Canucks with Quinn Hughes, Pedersen, Demko, um, it's so helpful. Um, I think they probably are like the most front-loaded team in the league. I don't think their depth is the same as other teams um, because of their star power. Uh, but I think they are one of the best teams. And when you have the best player, it definitely helps. I think Minnesota is a really deep team. Um, and they still have, you know, the star power with Heisey and uh, Zumwinkle. And then Toronto has been really good after a really tough start. They've really rebounded. Um, Natalie Spooner has been unreal, has, I think, 10 goals um, this season in like 12 games, which is like yeah. uh, maybe I took the Austin Matthews of, you know, playbook. Uh, and, and decide to score in all her games. But yeah. um, those, I think, are the three teams that have really separated themselves. And then at the bottom, it's a Boston, New York, and Ottawa that have, have kind of struggled to, to find a new momentum. Is Mary, uh, Marie Philippe Poulin the McDavid of this league, like by far away the best player? Or is it much closer um, in terms of uh, scale level between the players? Uh, that's a good question. I never thought about that. I, um. I mean, she's she's in her like early thirties. I would say she's more like a Crosby type. When Crosby was the best player in the league, but he wasn't producing leaps and bounds um, ahead of like the closest competitors to him. Um, Poulain's a very good defensive player as well. She's not just all offense like a Crosby. So that would maybe be more of a comparable. Um, she's not just a pure point getter. Um, and there's less goals in the PWHL. It's it's a much tighter league. It's a lot of two one three like two one games, three one games. There's less three two, four two. For example, Ottawa lost on yesterday, and they gave up six goals, and that was the most goals a, a team had scored all year with um, Montreal scoring six goals. In the NHL, you see that much more often, right? So um, there's less goals, but uh, so I think the points are like she isn't leading the league in points, so. That's maybe my uh, example. Yeah. Uh, what's the playoff structure like? Um, there's, there's eight teams. There's no way all eight teams get in um, six, as well. Six, six teams. Six teams. So is it yeah. like three? the first two teams get a bye, like how the NFL was no. at six teams? No, it's, it? it's very simple. It's it's one v four, two v three. The top four. That means, and then you go to a finals. Um, they're best of five series. Um, and yep, that's basic. It's not it's not too difficult, but yeah, it's it's. I, and I believe it's like two, two, one. That's how the, the playoffs would work. Best of five for both. Um, and yeah, so that's that's basically how it uh, how it all shakes down. So that's that's the playoff format and um, should be should be fun. And I'm excited for that. I, I hope Ottawa sneaks in to the playoffs. I don't know. That'd be really nice, um, just selfishly. Uh, and I, you know, obviously know the players and the, the staff and they're great. So obviously rooting for them um, selfishly even though I have to be objective too, but uh, obviously be happy if they made it and maybe make my May a little bit more fun too. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait, so you said six teams? Again? Six teams. No, there's four no, teams. There's six, six teams, teams in the league. There's Ottawa. Oh, sorry. Okay, I, I mistook yeah. it. Okay, I mistook I thought I saw eight for some reason. Okay, that, that's no, my bad. Okay. No. So there, there, is potential, yeah. there is potentially expansion, but I would not imagine there would be next year. But yeah, right now, six teams, Ottawa, six, okay, no, Boston. Yeah. Um, Toronto and Minnesota, so three oh. American, three Canadian. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. So I, I don't know why I thought there were eight. Okay, no, okay, no, that, 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 that's way easier. I was thinking WNBA made their uh, playoffs so complicated. I thought I was like, maybe it's something like that. But yeah. let's let's touch on expansion a little bit here. You said it might not. Have, I know you you don't know the news or if, whenever it's gonna happen. But if you if you were to predict. <laughs> Uh, expansion would it come over to the west coast right away or do you think it'll be slowly coming over like it'll go east to west and teams like vancouver yeah. alberta portland seattle stuff like that um yeah that's a good question uh i i i know just kind of i do know a little bit of some things i wouldn't say i'm an insider but i know a little bit about the league now um i would say I'd imagine it's probably going to be Detroit, Pittsburgh, maybe Philadelphia, like those kind of markets in the East. Um, because outside of Minnesota, all the teams are very closely knit together. 
but I, I do think because I just know like the Canadian teams have done much better in terms of attendance and everything compared to the American teams. So it might make sense to go to a Calgary or Winnipeg, maybe even Vancouver too, because Vancouver is such a big market as well. Um, the kind of problem is, is that um, for these teams is they want typically at least so far is they've tried to find venues for the team that aren't too big and aren't too small. Um, like look at TD place in Ottawa. I think the reason why they've sold out um, almost all their games is because it's like a perfect size. It's about six, 7,000 seat stadium. Um, unlike if they went to Rogers place in Vancouver, I don't know if they could sell out 20,000, hopefully, but um, it's a bit more of a, a different dynamic. So um, that's kind of the, the fine line or the, that the, the league is trying to find is those places for teams to go that in an arena where they can fit enough fans, but also not make it too like there's just too much, uh, you know, empty seats. Right. So that's not always good too. So I think that's kind of the problem. Hopefully I'd love to see Vancouver get a team. I think they'd be a great PWHL market, um, but I wouldn't expect that to be to happen in the next I'd say maybe in three years from now, well, we could be looking at a 10, 12 team league, but I don't think uh, next year at the very least, I don't think there will be expansion from what I've heard. So like this is the inaugural season, right? So yeah. Does that mean everyone's everyone's a rookie or like? <laughs> no, no, that's a good <laughs> question. It's a good question. I've asked this before. Basically how it works is and how it makes sense is um, all the players that played college hockey last year, coming into this season, um, like 23, 20 or 22, 23, they're considered rookies. So like Taylor Heisey, um, in yeah. Ottawa, like Gia, Emma Malte, those types of players. I don't know if you know them, but they're players that were in college last year, but like Poulain isn't a rookie. <laughs> yeah. Jenner, they, they aren't considered rookies because they've one, they played professional hockey before. Um, but also just the, the, the way they, um, explain it for like rookie of the year ballots is is that way is is um, who finished college and uh, yeah going into going into this year. It will be crazy if a Kulan wins MVP and rookie of the year. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't. I don't think we're we're seeing that. Uh, yeah. Not 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 at least right now. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you mentioned this earlier. So just gonna go back to that a little bit. The uh, women's hockey mainly was primarily. Canada versus USA for us, for example. And those are usually the fun games, the only teams that we know that have the top players of the world. Uh, in this setting, you have, like you said, it's a club format. So you have many different nationalities on the same team. You get to play uh, um, uh, the, as teammates as well and, and, and amongst your other nation, uh, national team players. Outside of Canada and America, because we know the top players there, are how far along are the other countries' top best players and can they make a push in international scene anytime soon? Um, I, I, you know, Finland beat Canada a couple of years ago with their great goalie, um, uh, Ratu. But um, I would say it's still a ways away. I think what you're going to see now is that there's going to be more teams that are a bit more competitive, like not in terms of, I think Canada, USA will be the, the gold medal final the next maybe two three olympic cycle cycles for sure um at least the next two but i do think the gap will continue to close i know like the czechs have a bunch of players i think they're the next team that's maybe the third place team finland has some players um you know on odd whether there's a hungarian player there's a japanese player i don't know if those countries are going to become hockey women's hockey hotbeds but at the same time i do believe that the whole level of the women's game is going to increase um, dramatically with this professional league and especially with, um, you know, the, the international game. So I think when you look at countries like Finland, uh, Czech Republic, other countries like that, I think the, the women's game will, will grow in that in those places, but I don't think the dominance of Canada, USA will dramatically change at least in the, the near term. How talented are some of these players, um, non-Canadian and non-American players? That they are they are in the PWHL for a reason, but they are able to compete against the top of the top, right? It's not like it's like how Leon Draisaitl is one of the top players in the NHL, but he is the guy from Germany. So no one thinks Germany will compete with the top guys. Something like that. That type of similarity. 
Yeah, Alina Mueller is one of the best players in the world, and she's Swiss. Um, I think, you know, there's a lot of really good depth players, but I think she'd be maybe the best non-Canada USA player. I, I'm sure I'm missing other really good players, but those are that's the one that springs to mind who is like one of the best players out there in the whole world. Um, and, and she went to Boston. Um, so I think that's a player to kind of think of as maybe the, the dry sidle of the NHL, uh, for lack of a better uh, term. But um, that, that's probably the one that springs to mind. Ottawa has two really good Czech players who are, you know, top line players. One's a center, one's a defenseman um, who play significant minutes. So um, I think you see that around the teams that there's players that are in the top six or, sorry, or, um, uh, or you know, top four. But uh, the one that's maybe like a star would be Mueller. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, this question is something from your podcast. Usually you ask your guests at times. Okay. If you're in charge, improvements to the league, if any you have, any changes you, you could think of, stuff you could you would like to add, whether other leagues have them, or personally even, or anything you would like to take away that may be like, eh, we could be better without this. Uh, that's a good question. I mean, my media mind has some ideas. I would say the first one is I think Toronto needs to get to a bigger arena. They, they play at the anatomy um where where tmu is plays in like a 2000 seat stadium i think they're gonna play more games at uh, scotia bank arena but i think that's something that's needed i think boston and new york probably need different venues they need to be in boston and be in new york right now one's in connecticut and, and one's in long island i just don't think it's like the perfect venues um so that's one thing on the ice. I don't think there's a lot they've done. I think they've done a lot of really smart things. I, you guys mentioned the YouTube. I think that was really smart. Just get anyone. If they want to watch, watch. Right. And I think that's smart. They focus less on just making money right now. Instead, they focus on growing an audience. And and I think you can, it's paying dividends. Sorry. Um, I think another thing would maybe be, and this is more like minute, but have more like post game press conferences or um, post game or like practice videos, like like so that people can watch and see the players, so that they get a bit more familiarity of who they are and how they speak. Um, I think that would be helpful. That's something I've I've tried to kind of push a little bit in Ottawa um, with PR, and like they've been great. I'm not. It's not. It's not. I'm not blaming them. Um, I think it's just something like the next level, right? Um, that they can take the league just to make it more visible, make more people really understand and connect with these women, right? Because they can see them on the ice. But um, but I think like they're all very good personalities. There's a lot of great TikToks of, of the players um, having fun. Um, they're really open and, and the women really get it. So I don't think the players or the league needs to do anything dramatic. I think they're going on the right track and it's awesome to see. All right, we're going to move on to the NHL now to close out the uh, podcast. Uh, obviously, Ottawa Center is not the greatest year this year, but the trade deadline is coming up March 8th. The Senators have some piece. Uh, obviously, the guy that covers the team a lot. What are some trade pieces they have? We've heard rumors of Jacob Chikorin uh, and Vladimir Tarasenko mainly. Are the, do you believe they'll get traded? And is there any other players you could see on Ottawa get traded or even Ottawa acquires? Like I heard Chris Tanev from Elliot Friedman a while ago. But your thoughts on that? Yeah, I don't know what to make of the TANF stuff. I've obviously seen that. Um, I don't really get it. But the thing is, you because Steos is a new GM, you don't really – like, I, there's no real track record to know what he's like, what types of players he likes, right? Like, you think of Kyle Dubas or you think of Brad Tree Living, um, Brian Burke. Like, you kind of know what players they like, um, who they are, what kind of trades they make. You have no idea you have what Steos is going to be like. I think – the the thing that's clear is that really no one outside of probably Sanderson, Kachuk, and um, Stutzler are untouchable. Although Ryan Whitney uh, threw out that Kachuk might be traded, I don't. I would find that incredibly hard to believe. Um, but to answer your your question, I think Tarasenko is most likely going to be traded. I'd be I'd be pretty surprised if he stays in Ottawa, he has a, I believe in no trade clause. So that obviously complicates things, but not, I, I, not that much. Um, there's a lot of no trade clauses that teams work with and they still get good returns. Um, with Chikrin, um, I'm not saying it's impossible that he gets traded, but I would 
be surprised if he got traded right now um, just because uh, I think they're going to figure out if both teams or both parties want to stay together. Um, but he could be traded. I wouldn't be absolutely floored if he were, um, but I wouldn't say I would expect him to get traded up by no means. I think that's more of an off-season decision. Um, I mean, there's Dominic Kubelik, who I'd imagine gets traded, but that's not really – that's not a big deal. Um, I think this off-season will be really interesting. Do they – look to other goalies because obviously their goaltending has been bad. Do they buy out Corpusalo, which is a topic here in Ottawa? Um, do they trade a Norris, a Batherson, um, all those types of players? I think that's what people are looking at and, and what might happen um, depending on what Steos decides. But, uh, you know, I asked Steos a question, just what was his plans heading into the the trade deadline and he said the market will dictate so i think because he's not loyal to any of this these players none of those players are people he invested in drafted etc um i think anything could could happen and uh hopefully uh you know um they can turn around the ship but they've been really good of late they've the last 15 20 games they've been playing like one of the best teams in the league and hopefully that continues and they <laughs> bring that into to next season um, so we okay, just overall picture of the trade deadline. We already saw some of the top targets get traded. Sean Monahan, obviously Canucks got Lindholm and Zadorov, Kuzmenko going the other way as well. Who are who do you think will be the biggest name that can get traded? Um that that's realistic chance of getting traded by March eighth. Um Nikita Zadorov. No, I'm kidding. Uh <laughs> I, I have uh that's a great question. There's not that many big names like you talk about Adam Henrique. I, I think probably Noah Hannafin. I think that's probably the biggest name. Um, all the sounds like is that he's going to go to somewhere in the States most likely. Um, so I think that's a big name. Like he's a good player. He he had two goals, I think, yesterday. Has over 10 goals. He's a pretty good defensive defenseman too. He can easily slide into your top four pairings. I think that's probably the biggest name and most impactful guy that might, might get traded. Obviously, Tanev might go back to the Canucks. That'd be cool. Um, I think he's a you know, would be a nice add to any team, but I don't, I wouldn't call him a game changer. Um, but I'd say probably Noah Hannafin. So it's pretty much the Calgary. You just got to look at Calgary, this trade Cal- deadline. Yeah, I mean, there's some, there's some U, UC Soros buzz. I think that would be yeah. huge. I, I just, it's hard to trade goalies and it's hard to trade goalies, especially in, at a trade deadline. Um, but you never know. Um, so we'll, we'll see. I think this summer will be really fascinating with, um, just the cap going up, more signings, maybe more player movement because teams aren't so up against the cap. So I'm excited for the summer. Um, I think this deadline might be a dud, but you never know. It's things yeah. surprise you. What are the odds of Gensel getting moved? I think that's a really interesting thing. Obviously, Pittsburgh is a bit out of the playoff um, kind of landscape right now he's going to be, he's going to return. If they trade him, I think you might see other players get traded. Um, I think there's a good chance. I, 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 I just, it would be interesting to see if Dubas pulls the plug on this experiment um, because Pittsburgh doesn't have a lot of prime and not a lot of other opportunities to really go for the playoffs. And, and they did it this year and it hasn't really backfired a bit. Um, obviously an aging course. So uh I, I don't have any inside information. Um, I think that's probably 50-50. But again, see, like that that's the thing is if a Gensel, Hannafin, Tanev, Soros get traded, that's a pretty cool deadline. Yeah, that's if, great, yeah. If only Hannafin gets traded, that's fine, but very different. So I think there's a lot of things in the air and hopefully, uh, you know, some, some trades happen and especially to Canadian teams. I'd like to see all the Canadian teams be pretty loaded going into the playoffs. Yeah, the Gensel thing is a weird situation because of his injury right now. So you don't even know what you're going to be getting. Uh, if he'll be even be healthy, fully healthy, or however much percentage health he'll have for the playoffs. On top of that, it's like you're trading away Crosby's line mate. And when you have Sidney Crosby, you, you kind of want to have, you're in that stage of like, we'll always have a chance until we're mathematically eliminated, right? So it's like, do you want to be loyal to Crosby in that sense? Or, you know... It's, it's just that weird situation because Crosby himself is uh, up in a couple of years as well, I think, in two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's the Crosby, Malkin, Latang show and Carlson too. So 
um yeah i mean i but it's like are you gonna sign him if you if you don't think yeah. you're gonna sign him you're probably not making the playoffs if you think True. you can sign him then maybe it doesn't make any sense to trade him so i think that comes into the aspect of it too right like you think about the calgary guys they keep saying they want to sign them maybe they do but um i feel like at this point the fact that they aren't signed is a pretty telling indication that they probably aren't going to be signed but again i you know i maybe i need to text selim Valji maybe and ask him if <laughs> there's anything i know he tweeted yesterday that all signs point to i'm paraphrasing but all signs point to Canavan being traded so that's uh that'd be exciting yeah all right, Alex, um, that's it from us today. We appreciate the time once again. But as always, just plug your stuff. Where can people find your work, especially the PWHL stuff too? Yeah, well, I just want to say uh, thanks so much for having me on. You guys have been doing great work. I think I saw you got the 10K views on a yeah. on video. So that's awesome. Yeah. And I see your subscribers are going up. So just really happy for you guys. You guys are growing. You guys work hard and you know deserve uh, everything that's you know coming with the podcast and everything else. So appreciate um, that want to say that first but yeah no um you can follow me at alex adams btp on on x twitter whatever you want to call it and then uh i'm uh you know obviously covered the senators for the hockey news and, and the pwhl ottawa so if you're ever interested in that or ask que- have questions uh you can always DM, dm me on twitter more than happy to to talk to you guys and uh yeah thanks so much for for having me and yeah check out behind the play i have a big uh i, I mean uh, I, I don't know when this goes out, but I'll have a, a pretty cool, I'm getting to my hundredth episode and I'm going to have a pretty, uh, it's going to be an Ottawa contingent of, of the star media here in Ottawa. So I'm excited for that um, coming out uh, next later next week. So um, stay tuned for that. If uh, you're interested, it's not just going to be about Ottawa, but it's, it's uh, some, some big hitters in the media space. So um, yeah, check that out too. Perfect. Yeah. Once again, everybody will be linked down below. Make sure you guys check out the podcast we did with Alex where he talks about his journey and we just, you know, a lot of other fun stuff. We released some uh, TikToks with the build the players as well. Uh, Once again, everything will be linked down below and we appreciate everybody for watching and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Peace.